Hello, I'm Teresa Mitchell, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. The summer may be behind us, but that doesn't mean it's time to put away the fishing equipment. Washington offers opportunities year-round, with thousands hauling in chum salmon from Puget Sound right now. Chum fishing is what's happening here in November. Uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, you can see a lot of fish jumping. Um, there's good fishing from the bank and from boats, so it's, uh, it's quite exciting to come down here. A little frustrating at times. Uh, lots of casting, but uh, it's fun to see all the fish. Uh, we've been using today uh, a lot of spoons and spinners. Um, some herring works real, really well underneath a bobber. Uh, we've tried some wiggle warts and hot shots. No success today, but uh, they can become productive sometimes. There is a lot of bank access here, so uh, a kid could come down here and enjoy some fishing, uh, get some casting practice in, and uh, a good chance of catching a fish. In November, chum is the primary fish that they're going to encounter out here, so uh, we weren't going to have any concerns with other species primarily. And the last few years, the chum salmon has been doing quite well, especially in Puget Sound. The numbers, uh, they fluctuate a little bit, but are on an upward trend. Uh, so there should be a lot of them available. This is a great opportunity for some, uh, some November late season fishing. So uh, grab yourself your rod and head out here and, and try to catch a chum. The late fall months and winter are prime time for steelhead fishing in eastern Washington, including a steelhead fishery on the famous Snake River. Welcome to the Snake River in Clarkston, Washington. We're, today we're going to fish for A-run steelhead with a sliding bobber rig and some sort of bait. Today we're going to use shrimp. We're going to fish right here and hopefully we'll catch a few for you guys to enjoy. Today we're using a sliding bobber and a hook that we generally operate with some sort of a dyed shrimp or you can use a black jig and a little piece of shrimp on it and typically what you do is set this down at some depth where you see the fish appearing on the fish finder and you try to get those fish to bite it. Um, normally it, and your expectations for this time of year would be two or three fish a day would be a good day but it's a good early tune up for a long extended summer steelhead season up here on the Snake River. We're out here in September, but the peak of the summer steelhead season up here on the Snake River is October well into November. And uh, while this is a, a decent fishery, you can expect to have much higher catch rates if you fish from the middle of October to the middle of November. Today what we're fishing for is Aeron steelhead. And what you'll see on the video is they're typically small fish, four to 10 pounds. And uh, they enter into the Columbia River at the mouth sometime in July or early August and then migrate their way up the Columbia River and arrive here in Clarkston, Washington, all somewhere between the end of August and the middle of September. Most all of the A-run steelhead are through Bonneville Dam by the end of August. And then we get what we call B-run fish, which are bound for the Clearwater River in Idaho and the Salmon River in Idaho. And the B-run fish run 10 to 20 pounds. So you can have a mix of opportunity here in the Snake River at Clarkston because both runs of fish go through this area that we're fishing today. You, you can fish this fishery from the 1st of September all the way through till the 15th of April. And it depends on the area that you want to fish. As you get later into the season, you want to progress up into the tributaries where the fish are migrating into to spawn. This time of year you're looking low in the system and probably by the middle of December you'd want to start to look higher up in the system. Up in the Grand Ron River, up in the Two Cannon River, but not maybe as much in the main stem Snake River. In this fishery we use barbless hooks because we have a threatened stock of steelhead. The A-run and the B-run are both threatened under the Endangered Species Act. And so what we require is that you use barbless hooks and release all wild fish that are ca captured. Keep in mind that in the state of Washington, one of the laws that also goes along with that is that you do not remove fish that you do not intend to harvest from the water. Calmly reach over, unhook the fish, and let it go on its way without molesting it too much. Also, what occurs here in, in the Snake River is an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act, which is fall and summer composite Chinook. 
And we ask that you're especially careful with handling those fish if you do incidentally hook one. There is no fall or summer Chinook harvest allowed on the Snake River system. Over the past 10 years, we've seen an expansion of interest in harvesting steelhead from the Snake River. As you can see by the footage you'll see today, there's a number of boats out here in early September trying to harvest steelhead. You'll see as the season progresses through the middle of November, a large number of anglers out here on this stretch of water and well up into Hell's Canyon pursuing steelhead on the Snake River. We would encourage folks to come here. It's a great place to vacation and an excellent opportunity to catch A run and B run steelhead. When the tuna are running off the Washington coast, you can get on a charter boat and head to sea for a day of intense fishing. If this is for you, Will Morrison tells you how. One of the ways you can enjoy yourself at the Washington coast is to go out and go sport fishing for tuna. Tuna fishing is a great opportunity, great fun, lots of action. Sometimes it involves getting up here in Owako at 3 to 4 in the morning, going out to sea, sometimes approximately 30 miles, and it could involve uh, three to four foot rollers. And you might consider bringing your Dramamine. If this doesn't appeal to you, there's actually another way. You could come down to Owako, contact the commercial fishermen or one of the fish companies. You can purchase all of the tuna you want and you can go home with your fresh catch without the Dramamine. The next thing you might consider is taking your catch to one of Iwako's custom canneries. Those canneries will process your fish and put it into small cans. After your fish has been canned and put into your pantry, what a great enjoyment for the winter months or as great gifts from the state of Washington to your friends and family. And on top of it all, what a great excuse to go to the Washington coast and enjoy the town of Iwako. Here are some other fishing opportunities across Washington for the weeks ahead. While most associate a trip to the ocean with summer, bird watchers flock to the coast this time of year to observe the migration of shorebirds. It's another great excuse to visit the coast. The shorebirds typically during the uh, fall and spring feed on the mud flats in Willapa and Grays Harbor. They probe into the mud, feed on small invertebrates. During high tide, the water's covered. The mud flats, they don't have access to that food resource and they fly to the outer coast and they'll sit on the beaches and they'll actually loaf on the beaches in large flocks of several thousand. So in areas like Ledbetter Point, the end of the Long Beach Peninsula, at Ocean Shores, and at Toklin are good opportunities during high tide to watch the shorebirds. Uh, in particular, some of the birds you might see are Dunlin. Uh, came, they're here throughout the winter and they fly from the, the Arctic regions where they nest. Sanderlings will be spend the winter on the Washington coasts. Uh, you'll see some western sandpipers, smaller sandpipers, um, sometimes people call them peeps, the small ones that they run out in front of you on the beach. Uh, there's uh, some flocks of dowichers, uh, there's some spots you'll be able to see wimbrels. Uh, Semi-palmated plovers uh, have been pretty abundant that we've seen. A good opportunity to see many different types of shorebirds uh, on the beach. Um, and, and shorebirding at that time can be kind of difficult, so it'll be important to have a good guide because their distinctive breeding plumages have left and they're all different shades of gray, um, but, but it, it's both exciting and challenging to bird uh, in the winter time to identify those birds. It's important when you're out on the outer coast in the winter time, there's not many people out there and so there's some safety considerations I think you want to have in mind. One is to, to know where the approaches are. You may lose visibility in the fog, so I usually try to check my odometer to know my distances that I've gone so I know where to find my approaches. The sands are particularly soft at, in, um, well, in, in Toklin areas and Ledbetter Point and some of the better birding areas you're in soft sand so you want to 
Um, make sure you either have four-wheel drive vehicle or, or just drive in safe places and get on a walk when the sand gets a little softer. Um, uh, a cell phone or other communications so you can uh, contact people, but be aware that you don't want to be low on the beach in soft sand and have the, the tide come in and make your um, exit difficult or wet. November is an exciting time. The beach can be a very dynamic environment. It can be cold and rainy and blustery, so you want to stay safe. Make sure you have good warm wool gear or other warm, good outdoor clothes and good rain gear. Um, enjoy your time, but be safe. Here are other wildlife viewing and hunting opportunities for the month. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching and please visit our website for more information.